Hi, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the chart widget from the plus add-ons for Elementor. Now with this widget we can create line charts in Elementor, uh, we can also have bar charts, both vertical ones and horizontal ones as well, just like this. Uh, if we scroll on down you can also have radar charts or polar area charts and they are interactive just like this so you've got little tool tips that can come up while you're using them. Uh, you can also have donut charts and pie charts and last but not least you can also have bubble charts. So I'm going to show you how to use this widget, build it from scratch so that you can get the information you need onto your web pages. I'm Jack with Jack in the Net, bringing you this guest tutorial on behalf of the Plus Add-ons for Elementor. Make sure to subscribe to their channel, that way you won't miss out on upcoming tutorials on how to use all of their widgets, and check out my channel as well for all things WordPress. Now, let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have the chart widget enabled. So from the Plus Add-on setting, come over to plus widgets and then find charts. You can just use the search box over here, type in chart and then make sure that this is enabled. If it isn't, turn it on, click save and when you've done that, come on over to performance and make sure to clear the cache. You should also do this with any third party caching plugins that you might have active on your website. When we've done that, we can come on over to our web page and edit with Elementor. So once you're here, you can simply search for the chart widget up here, or you can also find it underneath the plus essential section. Scroll on down, you'll find it just here. So click and drag this on into the page. Now, by default, this is going to give you a line chart. Just over here on the left, you can select the type of chart that you want, and we're going to come back to each of those in uh, just a few minutes time. But for now, let's start with the line chart. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is set up label values. So these are what are going to appear down here at the bottom of our chart. Now, these could be numbers if you wanted. It doesn't have to be months. If I change that to 100, you'll see that changes down there. So obviously, what you put in here is going to be completely down to you and the type of data that you're wanting to report on your website and on your chart. But... For the simplicity of this tutorial, I am just going to have in here these months. So you can see that they've appeared down here. Now, you will obviously notice that they've come to a stop just here, and that is because we need to come over to our data set. Now, currently we have January, February, and March here. If we want to create another one, we can simply duplicate it and then come in and rename it. Or if you want, you can click add item and then you just do the same thing give it a name now what we'd want to do if we start with our top box up here you see that this is our data so we've currently only got three entries and that is why it's only going up to here on our chart so far now each of your data entries need to be separated by the pipe symbol or the the vertical line on your keyboard so put in a vertical line put in another number and do the same again. And now we can see that that's sweeping nicely across our chart. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing for the other ones here. So there we go. I've added those in and we've now got our lines going all the way across our chart. Within each of our chart boxes, we have the same settings. So if we look at January to begin with, we've got controls for the dot backgrounds. Now, to make this simple for you to see, I'm going to get rid of the fill. So at the moment, you've got colors filling these in. I'm going to disable the fill, and I'm going to do that on each of these. So let's just take those off for now. Just like this. And now we just have the lines going across our chart. And also, so that it's nice and easy for you to see, I'm going to move this line for January, this yellow one, up here. So let's make this... 75, 80, 85, 85, and I'll leave it on 75, that's fine. Uh, by the way, it's currently going up to 90 because this is as high as we've got it on here. If I change this suddenly to uh, 185, 
naturally it's increased the numbers that we have over here on the left to allow for that on our chart, but we'll leave it as it was. And now you'll see that we have the dot background color. So at the moment, that is currently this sort of faint yellow. If we wanted, we could change that, make it a darkish blue, and you'll see that that's changed. Alternatively, we can have multiple dot color backgrounds. So if I turn this on, you'll see that straight away, this one's sort of faint yellow, this one is faint green, then that's sort of a purpley color corresponding with the color in the middle square on our tooltip there. And then these two at the end, they both appear to be the same color. Why is that? It is because down here we have the codes for our multiple dot color backgrounds and we only have three codes in there at the moment. So if I separate one with a pipe symbol again, put in our hash key and enter a hex code, let's just go with black so it's simple, uh, and then put in a blue, we can now see that those have appeared over here. So you just need to enter your hex codes to put in those colors. And of course you can get those simply by clicking on any color swatch and it tells you what the colors are. As you move it around, it changes. You see like this, so you can simply copy and paste if you're not sure. You can then change the color of the line and the dot border. So if I change it over to a red, that's obviously changed. Uh, or you can change multiple borders as well. So I know it's small, so it's quite hard to see, but at the moment the actual border around each of our circles is the same color. We can change those as well if we want to. If I change this first one over to black, you see now we've got a black border around our yellow little circle. So that's what those are for, but I'm going to leave those off for now. And let's change our line color back to sort of this sandy color. I quite like that. The fill we already looked at earlier. I turned those off, but you can have them on if you want to. Uh, and then instead of having a solid line, we can have a border dash. So you turn that on and as the name suggests, we now have a dashed border. So depending on the type of chart you want, you can turn that on or off. And those settings that we've looked at under January are exactly the same for February or whatever you've called your label, whether it's that, whether it's a number, doesn't matter. Just remember that when you change them within your data sets, when we hover over them, it's changed that value down there. So now it says February 100 as opposed to February and February, just like that. So that's where you can change the, the label that is appearing inside your tooltip on your charts as opposed to up here where we were naming the label values themselves. They are what appear down here at the bottom of our chart, okay? So just don't get confused between those two. They are separate. But you can now copy for each of these the settings that I've just shown you, and that way you can design them in the way that you like. When you've done that, we come down to extra options, and there's a few more things here. The first is whether or not you want to have the grid lines enabled. So if I turn this off, all of our grid lines disappear. If I turn them on, we can then control the X axis and the Y axis separately. For example, grid colors, X axis at the moment, uh, it's pretty black. Let's change this over to white, make it transparent. And you can see that now our X axis ones, well, we can't see them. We can only see the Y axis ones. Uh, likewise, if I put that back to where it was, come over to the Y axis, we could do the same thing. Turn that off, make it transparent, and now we can only see our X axis grid lines. And obviously, you can put them at any color in between on the scale that you want. If you want to make them sort of red, you can do that. It's completely up to you. Once you've done that, you then also have the zero line color. So, for example, let's make this sort of a yellow color. And as you can see, that has now changed it down here. So if you wanted to, you could then do the same thing for your x-axis line, and that would change the color of this one here. That's just if you want to have different colors for both. You can also enable or disable the draw border on the chart area. Again, for both the x-axis and the y-axis. That's another way of doing it instead of just making it transparent or changing the colors. And then we have our labels. 
So these are what appear at the side and at the bottom. So if we wanted to get rid of them, we can do. Alternatively, you can change the color of them. So let's make them green for this. And we could also increase the size. You then have your legend or your key, which is what appears just up here. Now, if you don't want it up at the top, we could move it either to the side or down to the bottom. You can then change the alignment, so we could have it on the sides. I'm going to leave it in the middle. And then naturally, we can change the size of those as well. Uh, and you can also change your text color too. Let's leave it how it was though. Then next up, we have the smooth option. Now we'll come back to this in just a minute, but if I turn it on, you'll see a slight change. The difference is that it becomes less pointy in the lines, but we're gonna change things down here in just a second. So when I make this bigger, it's gonna be a lot more easy for you to see the difference. So we'll come back to that in just a second. And then after that, we have the custom point style. So if I turn this on, we now see that our little points have changed. There's a few different designs here. You can go through and see what you like. For example, we could change those over to triangles instead. Or stars, I'm just gonna leave it on circle for now. And naturally you can change the color background so we can move it over to sort of a blue color. We can change the normal and hover sizes so we can make them a little bit bigger when they're normal. And then we can make them quite a bit bigger when we hover over them. So now if I hover over one, that line is going to increase in size. And then notice that our point border is currently dark. If we wanted, we could change that, make it sort of a pinky purpley color. And now that's changed the border as well. So lots of ways of styling this up. You can then change the border width. I'll leave it around two, I think. And don't forget, when going through all of these different options, once you've designed them for the desktop, you have the ability on all of them to go through and switch over to your tablet view and your mobile view, and just make sure that things are all looking correct, okay? You might want to then be changing the size of things on your tablet view and mobile. If you don't do this, then what you set up on the desktop is gonna be absolute uh, across the other devices as well. And of course, as we know, for responsive web design, those might not be quite right. So just remember to do that. Now that we've just made those changes, it's time to look back at this smooth option, okay? So you see at the moment, these are quite pointy in the way that the lines are reacting. If we turn on that smooth motion now, you see how much more curved it becomes, okay? And that's a lot more obvious now that we've made it bigger. So that's what this smooth option does. Choose whether or not you would like to have that on or off. Obviously gives you exactly the same data, but you might have a preference in your design for how it looks. Once we've done it, we then have the ability to change our tooltips. So when I hover over this, you can see we get the extra little tooltip information coming up. If you don't want that, we can get rid of it and then it won't do it. I do like it though, so I'm gonna leave it on. We can choose if we want that to be activated by hover or click. If it's click, then we physically have to click on something in order to get it to appear. I'm gonna leave it on hover for now. We can change the font size of our tooltip, make it bigger. We could also change the title and body color. So let's make the title color red. Let's make the body color black. And let's make the tooltip background a green. Go with a lot of different colors here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that I'm hovering over it, we've got our title, that's become red, our background is green, and the body color is black. And obviously the swatch color is corresponding to the color of our circles. We then have the ability to change the aspect ratio if we want to, and whether or not we want to maintain that aspect ratio. I'm gonna leave that as it was for now. That's gonna be easier to show you during this video. And then we have different animations. So for example, we've got the linear animation, uh, very different to the bouncing animation. So there's lots of different ones on there. Okay, you, you just need to go through and have a look and see what you like the look of here. When you've chosen that, you can change the duration. So this is in milliseconds. If I change this over to 3000 milliseconds, that's three seconds. It's gonna be a lot slower in that animation. 
So you can change that as well, get it to how you like it. And that is all of the design options for the styling underneath these extra options tab. So there's quite a few there, but as you've seen, they're actually quite simple when you go through each of them. And this way, you can design up your charts exactly as you like them. Now that we've done that, let's head back over to the chart tab and instead of a line, let's switch over to a bar. So we now have a vertical bar and everything else is the same. We've got our label values. Naturally, you can change those if you want to. You've got your data sets. Everything is carried over from what we just had on the line charts. Same with the background colors that we put in. Okay, all of these are exactly the same. They've pulled over, so we don't need to go through all those again. You can switch over to a horizontal bar if you want to. And one thing that is different when you're looking at the bar section, if we come under the extra options, you'll now find that you have bar size. So if I change this, notice that it's made these a different width. We could also change the bar space as well. So that's something that we didn't have obviously underneath the line option. So a couple of things do change under this extra options tab that we have here. And remember, check it out on desktop, tablet and mobile so that it looks good across your different screen sizes. We then have radar. Again, everything is pulled through all of our data sets that we had before, all of the styling for our dots. Okay, you just need to come in, you can change your colors that we've already set up before on here if you don't like it. Otherwise, it is all the same. Donut and pie charts, when you've clicked in, you can choose whether or not you want to have a pie or a donut chart. Now, something that is a little bit different here, you will notice that these two have been faded out, okay? We now only have three colors, we don't have these two. And you might be wondering why, because you've got all of your labels. Well, if you come into data sets, it's because we now only have three sets of data here instead of five. And we only have three corresponding background colors and border colors. If I now put in an extra couple of numbers here, let's just go with 50 and 70. Okay, so it's added those in, but they've both got the same color, gray, because that's the default, because we'd need to put in the colors down here. Okay, I'd need to come in, put in another hex code, Okay, so now we've got black and blue in there as well. And we've also got border colors on here on these three. We haven't got them on these two because we'd need to add them in. Those are the only changes that you'd need to make, okay, when you're looking at either a pie chart or a donut chart. We then have our polar area. Same thing again, when you first put in the widget, it's just set up for three. So you'd need to come in and uh, add in your extra data if you have it. Everything else is the same, and you've guessed it, exactly the same for the bubble as well. So it pulls over our data, and you can choose whether or not you want to have your grid line showing, what colors you want to have for all the labels, and your legend, and everything else. So although the different charts are obviously very visually different from one another, and designed to do different things, the actual settings and how you control them are all the same. And that's why for such an advanced widget that can give you so many different options, it's actually really quite simple to use. So that is it for the charts. If you do have any questions, post them on in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, that way you won't miss out on the other upcoming videos on how to use all of the plus add-ons for Elementor widgets. Thank you very much again for watching. Bye-bye.